What's going on everybody? Today we're going to do a modification to my race car that's going to make it at least two seconds a lap quicker. Just kidding. If you saw the title of the video, you know we're going to tinker with the shifter to get, a ri to get rid of a little bit of that shifter slap. Now we're actually jumping in because as you can see we already have the trans tunnel top off and everything's taken apart and the reason everything's taken apart I originally just tried to turn down like a new shim on my mini lathe that I was hoping that would take some of the slop out of it and it did but it was it was minimal so that's kind of why what we're going to do you know what let's just yeah let's just jump into it and I'll kind of show you what we got. All right, guys, so here we are all set up. For those who don't know, this is an MT82 out of a V6 Mustang because the bolt pattern bolts right up to the 3.5 EcoBoost that I swapped into it several years ago now. It is extended. You can see the sleeve I put on it because the driver position is set back about 12 inches. So I had to extend, you know, these two arms right here to get this whole shifter mechanism back here. But... The problem is with these reverse lockouts, these are the ones you have to press the whole thing down to go under for reverse. But since this slides, ready? You can see how much movement forward and backwards, how much movement is in this because there needs to be enough clearance between this shift lever and I guess the shifter shaft or base, whatever you want to call it. I'll take this off in a second you'll see what I'm talking about but that's kind of what I want to get rid of is mostly this slop I do have the Delrin bushing in here already as well as shortening it maybe a little bit just a little quicker shifts should be nice so to remove it we're just gonna take out this little grub screw and then there is a hole in the front I just use a magnet pull the little locking pin out and then once that's out there is a spring in here I don't want to lose. Right there. It's got some washers on it. I guess you can adjust the tension. So now you can see this, this plastic sleeve. My original idea was to machine this sleeve out of aluminum and, may, and make it just have a slightly tighter tolerance to this shift lever. The problem is machining something see how this kind of almost presses on it's a tolerance fit there's let's put it back on there's probably I don't know ten thousandths or so of like room between the two I think it was around 12 when I mic'd it out 12 thousandths of an inch making a machine one in order for it to slip on there had to be a few thousandths clearance between this part and this part and then a few thousandths between the shift lever and that on the outside so the total slap was you know still around like eight thousands or so so it, it really wasn't much of an improvement so that's kind of how we ended up on this whole topic that we're going to do now i 3d printed some bits we're effectively going to be turning this reverse lockout setup to what you know the the shelby the gt350 has it the newer mustangs um, actually a lot of cars have it where you have the little collar where you use your fingers to pull it up and then over into reverse so that's what we're going to get into now I'll kind of show you what I 3d printed and we're going to do a mock-up and then get into actually you know turning the parts down on the mini lathe and we might have to mill a few holes and slots and stuff so we'll get into all that all right so here's the main shift lever 3d printed with the proper size hole on the bottom I did model threads into it I don't know if the light will show that um, but for mock-up I did an M8 I think it's a little bit small so we're gonna swap it to at least an M10 maybe an M12 um, and the shift knob will sit up where my finger is um, but the small holes for the grub screws I can't really 3d print like an M something as small as an M5 so just gonna tap them out real quick. What makes this easy is you can 3D print the hole the proper size. So all you gotta do is just run a tap through it real quick. 
And then there you go, you got a threaded hole for mock-up. Alright guys, so here's where we're at. These grub screws are obviously way too long, but it's what I had on hand for mock-up. And then what this piece is supposed to be, it's much larger than you would expect. Um, but again, it is plastic. And you also got to remember, since this is going on this, on a normal shifter or like a new setup, this shaft just goes all the way up and is threaded. And the shift knob just threads onto this. This setup, I kind of need like an intermediary collar. Hence why the this piece that lifts up has to be so large. So the bottom of it, let's bring you over on this side. You can see, it looks like we might be a little bit close, but the reverse lockout, so it, it can't go into reverse until you know the ship knob will be on it. You pull it up, then it can go over to reverse. Now I did go on McMaster and look out, look at springs, like a three inch spring will go from the base. There's just enough room in here up to the bottom of the shift knob. That's what keeps tension on it and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of happy with where we're at. I'm going to tighten these up and kind of get an idea of where, where we're at with everything. And then, you know, go ahead with the, keep moving along with the mock-up. The reason I did this round is, you know, over time, this just might rotate. I maybe could have modeled some sort of like locating like keyway or something, but I feel like that would have just overcomplicated it. I just made it round. So even over time, if this turns, you know, it'll still hit where it needs to. So yeah, let's keep moving with, let's get the stud in. Here's the super awesome shift knob that I printed. It's way too big. If you've ever 3D modeled anything, you've probably done the same thing where even if you kind of have a mic in your hand or a tape measure or something, you know, you're designing something, you're like, yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> and then this printed out and it's like, Ugh. It, yeah, I got to redo this, but it'll be good enough for mock-up. All right, so here it is. First mock-up. Feels pretty good. I don't have the grub screws because they're behind the collar. I'm just kind of mocking it up higher up on the shift you know the the shifter shaft I guess we'll call it um, but as far as the reverse lockout so there's first second to go to first or I'm sorry reverse there you go reverse so Yeah, that little tiny bit of slot will be taken out with those grub screws. So I'm actually super happy with how this is all working out so far. So yeah, I'm super happy with where we're at right now. Everything is designed in a way it's easy enough to kind of turn down out of aluminum out of this. Um, but what I got to do right now uh, with the power of uh, video editing, the next clip I'm going to have a you know, nice little supply of proper length grub screws, uh, some aluminum, the spring, all that stuff. So let's get to that right. All right, so I think this is everything I'm gonna need. I got my grub screws, my longer ones, my extra short ones. Um, I bought a special stubby drill bit for the thread of this um, mainly just because I have such a small lathe I you know just need something short uh, the springs I think this is like a nine inch pound spring or something um, and the main body is going to be turned out of this aluminum so yeah I think very first thing we're going to do is uh, cut this down uh, kind of start turning this into where is it into this this is going to be reversed because an m12 stud was like like 12 dollars or something where this bolt was only like a dollar something so uh redesign on this because the bolt will end up dropping through and screwing into the shift lever so yeah let's get this uh turned down and keep on rolling
stop real quick to share a little tip that I got. And I wish I remember the video that I saw this in. So with the round surface here and a point, um, you know, using this, this drill bit, where the round surface and the point come together, if you're basically dead center, this should be level. So I'll show you what I do if I end up going a little bit, if I end up going a little bit off center. So you can see how it ends up being crooked. Let's go back to where we were. And we'll call that good enough. So without any types of DROs or any fancy equipment or center finders, whatever, this is good enough to get us centered. Probably be within a few thousands. So here we go. I think we're ready to do final assembly on this. All the holes are threaded and you can see our 3D printed part. Where is it? Right there. But we had to make a few adjustments on the height of the holes uh, and I just did a little taper down here. But uh, yeah, I think we're, we're good to go. Happy with how this is going so far. All right, it might be a little hard to see what's going on when we're in the car, but here are the tiny, tiny little M5 grub screws that go in the side here. So we got one on each side to take out any of the side slot once this is finally installed. Off camera, I did do a slight test fit. We're gonna reuse two of these washers from the original one, just to raise this up a tiny, tiny bit. I ended up going just a little bit too deep on it. So the first one I'm gonna tighten is this one which should kind of center and do most of the locking in. There we go. So that keeps it from rotating. Snug these up. All right, so they are all on. Yeah, this is feeling awesome already. The tiny, tiny little bit of play is actually, I think one of the joints down here. Next is the lock collar. Spring fits right in there. Dang, look at that. Any little bit of that movement is moving the shift arm down here. Reverse. There you go, there's reverse. That's freaking cool. All right guys, so that about wraps this one up. So you can see it from this angle. So there, let's go, hit the clutch. So there's first, second, but if you need to go to reverse, there's reverse. Also, in case ever anybody is wondering about heat, on an MT82, it's already a remote mount shifter, so it's not like it's sitting on the transmission. And the exhaust, if you've been following me for a little bit, you know, runs down the side of the car. So there's no exhaust heat just like building up in here. Um, so I think PLA will be okay. This will be exposed, the top will be exposed. Once I put this boot back on, it'll come down to here. So the only bit underneath of the car will be a tiny bit here, but I, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay. Plan B would be to print this with some sort of higher temp something or turn down this collar out of a chunk of aluminum, but you know, I think we'll be all right. All right, so here we are, all wrapped back up with the boot back on it. Everything looks good. As I showed earlier, it works good. So yeah, I think that's where we're gonna wrap this one up. This was a fun one. Got to do a little bit of uh, 3D modeling, 3D printing and use the mini lathe and mini mill. Um, so kind of wrapping up a whole bunch of things into one little project. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
Also, please hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with other projects we have going on on this car. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.